Hi, this is Damna from Elven King and you're on Metal Vani. David Morris, how are you doing? I'm cool, thank you. What about you? I'm doing great. Now, I'm all excited, you know, uh, because I'm going to talk about the new album as well. So, and I, I really like the new album. So, it's definitely Elvin King's strongest album all around in lyrics, production, and of course, songwriting. So, even the artwork is amazing. How did the idea come about of the concept of this album? Well, yeah, actually, well, first of all, thank you for, for what you say. Um, yes. Um, yeah, I, I I agree with you when you say that this is the probably the best work for for Elden King because as you said, it has a, a very huge production mm -hmm. and uh, it has I think you know some of the strongest songs we've ever written and uh, mm. and this was 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 great and we could feel it. <coughs> I mean we we could feel it when uh, you know as we started to to, to write the songs because after. The summer tour we we made for Era, you know, supporting the Era album. Right. Um, we made you know a lot of gigs in Italy, and then we made some European festivals in Sweden, Czech Republic, and awesome. so on, you know. Mm -hmm. And you know the reaction of the crowd, and especially from our fans, was so good. Mm -hmm. And the connection with our fans grew so strong in the latest years. Wonderful. And specifically last summer, uh, which, you know, all this gave us so much positive energy to write uh, this new album. Mm -hmm. and, and we could feel it, you know, when we were writing the songs, that we had this great positive energy. And it, I think that for the, you know, a um, couple of albums before, it wasn't like that. I mm -hmm. mean, it was different. We got different energies and different, you know, influences. Right, I understand. This time it was so fucking positive and, and great and strong, you know. And uh, another thing we made before writing the new songs um, was, you know, me and Aiden, the guitar player, you know, we, we both take care of the songwriting. Right. And uh, we just sat down and, and found out this, these old cassettes, you know, mm -hmm. with old ideas we, we, you know, we just used to record in the very beginning where, you know, when the cassettes were still, <laughs> right. you know. Right. And, um, and we were, you know... It, it was cool to, 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 to listen to these old ideas we never used. Uh -huh. Probably most of them were, you know, shit, shitty ideas. <laughs> but it was cool to listen to, you know, how we approached music wow. in the beginning. Wow. And, 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 and all the, you know, we were very enthusiastic about it. We were kids. And, you know, all these positive strength and energy made us write this, this new album. It was great. And we could feel it. So I think this is, you know, the main reason behind the Pagan Manifesto. Wonderful. Now it's it's very heavy in orchestrated elements, and and the progression of the album is also you know it's stunning. Now you have also added folk instruments like the tin whistle and choirs, provided by a handful of guest musicians. So yeah. are these added elements something you just hear or feel when songwriting, or does it come through later on? Well, you know, actually, um, we use these kind of, of, of instruments and orchestrations uh, since I think you know we, we started with the with the classic instruments uh -huh. in, in in the acoustic album, the two tragedy poets. Right. But then you know in Red Silent Tides we we started with the orchestrations and then with Era we added them both. Right. But this time, yeah, we, we, we really wanted to have it huge because we felt you know when we write songs we can feel we want that kind of sound or True. you know we, yeah. we play a riff and we say oh this one i'd like i'd like you know the fiddle or there i'd like a big orchestra we already have it in our mind oh, but then you know in the latest year we found out two guys that are helping us out with the arrangements and writing all this stuff mm -hmm. which are you know who are really um helping us uh you know realize these ideas and they're great one is antonio agate who was um, the keyboard player for Secret Sphere. I don't uh -huh. know if you know the band. Oh, and you know, he, he helped us writing. You know, all these great orchestrations and and stuff. And and this time he made such an amazing job. Awesome. And, um, it's evident in your album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. And 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 Maurizio Cardullo from another Italian band called Folkstone uh -huh. um, played all you know the the bagpipes and all the tin whistles and all those um, folk instruments, which I think really uh, give that you know, kind of taste, we really, you know, 
we really need it on an album. Right. We're really happy about it. Yeah. That that's true. And now you and Aiden are the main songwriters. And while listening to the album, I felt that the guitars here almost seem to take a back seat than they had on previous albums. Now there are some focal points and melodic lines uh, taking you know spotlight a couple of times in the songs. They're not nearly as constant. Would you say that was intentional or maybe I'm just thinking too much? <laughs> okay, you you mean the guitars? Yeah. Well, actually, you know, I, I no, I don't I don't think this is happening. I mean, uh, maybe um, maybe the the songs themselves are giving more space uh -huh. to you know melodies, right. vocal vocals and 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 orchestrations and violins, and I think that they there's more room for that uh but you know we still wanted to have you know a, a killer guitar sound with killer riffs and, right. and I, think, I think yeah this is happening you know and especially in you know two or three songs of the album absolutely it really gives the you know pagan manifesto a mature and unique sound with all these you know, like you said it's not intentional it just happened so maybe yeah, I was just thinking too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. But no, it's it's a cool thinking. I mean, no. sometimes we we, we 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 just don't think about things, and they just come up when people listens to the album, and it's cool to 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 hear to these opinions. So right. that's, yeah, appreciate that. Now, some of the songs that really stick out to me on this new album is is the Pagan uh, Revolution and yep. Moonbeam Stone Circle, which are both yep. very straightforward folk metal tunes. But yeah. they 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 also seem to be very uplifting and upbeat now yeah this there, there must have been so much fun to play uh, what would you say if you had to pick are your favorites to sing on this album oh it's always very difficult for me because uh you know right. i'm uh when it comes to choose you know which are your favorite songs which are your favorite albums i'm always oh fuck <laughs> difficult. Because, you know, i may change my mind you know yesterday i liked i don't know maybe Elven Legions, but today I would say King of the Elves. And <laughs> okay. So today I'd say, I will say King of the Elves. And I will say that because um, that's a song where, uh, well, you know, it's it's a very long song. It's, right. It's like a 12-minute song. Yeah. And um, when we were kids, uh, we had this, you know, dream. I would call it a dream, but we wanted to write a big, long song, you know, like a... Uh, a masterpiece, you know, an epic piece. Yeah, yeah, like the the you know ultimate Elven King masterpiece, right. like 15 minutes, everything in it, and we wanted it to uh, to call it King of the Elves. Uh -huh. But you know, um, I think we made a wise choice, and we never wrote a song like that before because I think uh, um, when you write a song like that, you really need to have all the 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 instruments right. and I mean, all the means, all the experience, all. Uh, all the, you know, it has to be in a in a in a very specific time sure, in right. in a past career. So I think this time we just tried it. it we didn't push it. We okay. tried it, and uh, it came out so naturally. And you know, we were playing these riffs and these melodies and shit. And then we saw on on the recording on you know, on the Pro Tools, we saw that on the demo tracks, and it was like 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you know, we just looked looked at each other, me and Aiden, and we say, oh, finally we made it. <laughs> right. This is gonna be King of the Elves. Oh, so awesome. it has all, you know. I think the best features of our sound, you know, right. all the the speedy, the metal stuff. It has all the melodies, the acoustic and things, the, the yeah, the the female vocals, the the, the you know the harsh vocals. There's everything, and right. and I think that's a real a real sum, a real manifesto of our of our music. Absolutely, I agree with that. Now. There's something which you Italians and Greek people have in common, and that is to come up with some epic orchestration. Now, mm. I have my friends in Septic Flesh who always come up with some epic orchestrated parts, and now you guys have done that as well. What's there? Is there something in the air, in Greek air or Italian air? You know, you guys always seem to amaze us. Well, I think that probably that's in uh, it's in our culture, you know, right, right. in our blood. And, and uh, classical music is very important here in Italy. You know, yeah. all the opera yeah. and all the great composers. O of course, you know, not you know, there are very big composers who are not Italian, of course. But um, I think it's in our culture. A lot of people listen to classical music still. Right. And uh, uh, yeah, we're, you know, it's it's. I think it's a way to 
to make uh, make it, you know, even if it's metal, even if it's uh, hard rock or right, rock right. and roll or whatever, it, it's a way to to add um, an epic touch and also an elegant touch to mm -hmm. music because all these classical instruments are... They're really different, cool. they have their own set of, you know, magic. Yes, of yeah. course, it's, yeah, it's about magic, it's about being... Uh, I think elegant. I like that. Right. Word. I agree with that. Now, at the same time, you know, I, I just want to step back a bit and, and I want to find out a little bit more about you, especially since you have such an iconic and original voice. How did oh. you get into being a vocalist? Well, uh, actually, you know, I started as a guitar player when I was a kid. Um, classic guitar, then electric guitar, and, and, and I, I started in a, in a cover band. We made, you know, the classic songs like Metallica, Man of War, Iron Maiden, and right, so on. Right. You know, I was, you know, a small metalhead, you know, yeah. growing up. And, um, you know, we just, we needed a singer, uh -huh. and we didn't have a singer, and right. we couldn't find a singer. And, Same uh, problem just, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. can't find a singer. <laughs> so, what the hell are we going to do? Blah, blah, blah. And then I started to sing, and... and, and uh, you know, it was, it was, uh, it was strange, because I... You know, since I was a kid, I, 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 I was never very confident about myself, mm -hmm. and it's something I, it's, it's really, it's something it's, it's, it's still there somewhere inside of myself, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I never, I never thought I could have been a singer, mm -hmm. you know. But then uh, just starting off and rehearsing and doing shit, and you know, I think that, yeah, that I really, I really liked what I was doing, and then I, yeah, that's, that's how I become a singer or, or a. Wanna be singer? I don't know how you can define my, myself. <laughs> That's wonderful. Now that brings me to the question. Now, Elvin King being you know, successful, was there ever anything else you had your heart set on if Elvin King had not been so successful? Oof. Well, no. I think it's uh, uh, first of all, it's not about success. Right. Um, it's not about success because in the end, um, Elvin King is still. Not a band you can you can you can call successful, you mm -hmm. know, because um, it, I don't know. It, it's it's about the country we live in. It's about also the kind of music we play. Uh -huh. but we're not a, a successful band, you know. In a way, uh -huh. you know, if if you if you consider a successful band a band that lives from its music and can you know play right um, all you know throughout all the year. Yeah, and, basically and, make a living out of it. Yeah, that's it. And um, so it's about the passion, you know, about right. the passion and, 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 and the will to, to do, to play music. And so I think uh, we are good in doing this, good good at doing this, and, and I think we wouldn't do anything else. Of course, we all have other uh, other interests and, you know, other things. Uh, I know, right. for example, right. Raphael, the guitar player, uh, uh, also, you know, uh, paints with... Uh, he paints, you know, okay. and... Uh, for example, I don't know. I, I I make you know stuff with PC graphics shit and so on, and and so on. Each one of us has different interests and stuff. But I think yeah, that the main thing is is making music and the passion for this. So we wouldn't do anything anything else. Uh -huh, cool, that's awesome. Now, I also wanted to know about you know from the very beginning with Heath and Reel, Elvin King has always been drenched into pagan and Heath and imagery and lyrics. Now, yeah. does that come from actual religious beliefs of the band, or it's just a general interest? Well, actually, um, as I always say, paganism for us, um, it's, you know, we don't intend paganism as um, people usually do. Uh -huh. And I mean, it's not about the religious uh, meaning of the word or the historical meaning of the word uh -huh. or it's not about um, it's not worshipping Satan or worshipping strange gods or uh -huh. whatever. Even if we respect and we really love the subject and we respect all the, you know, the history and all the religions right. uh, uh, around this term, but uh, we use it as a metaphor. It's, 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 it's a, you know, metaphoric way okay. to yeah, I understand. Satan people yeah uh, to say to our message is you know is to say to people that if you are different and if you feel different if you are an outcast or they you know Aye. you are Aye. like banished from society or whatever it's it's a way you know it's you have to be proud of it it's right. not 
something you you have to be ashamed of. And, Absolutely, uh, I agree with that. That's our our main message, you know, behind our lyrics, behind our concepts, and uh, of course we use the imagery of 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 you know nature, mother nature, and you know all these pagan gods and stuff, and we are really into it. But it's more than that. It's it's a message we give to our fans. It's something we you know we can live nowadays. You know, right. Uh, right. Yeah. Of I course we. That. We, we kind of talk about burning witches because <laughs> they don't exist anymore. Yeah, right. yeah, of course, but it, it's a way to say, you know, this error has been made in the past. Absolutely. There's a thing called Witches Gather. It's a big error made in the past uh, for the ignorance of people, the ignorance of religion, the ignorance of, of you know, these uh, so-called... So societies. Yeah, all right, that's it. And, and, and this is something that hasn't have to happen again and uh, and when you are treated like a different or like an outcast you have to be proud of it because it right. means you're special it means you're different and True. that's good I agree with that wonderful now the album is already released in America and and my writer who is who's been loving your album and has been following you from right from the beginning wanted to yeah. know whether you guys are touring North America well, actually, at the moment, there's nothing planned, and uh, there's nothing planned in, in, in Europe, apart from some, you know, a couple of gigs we're going to do this summer in Italy. Mm -hmm. um, we will, you know, the album has been released in May, so it's, right. it's, it's very difficult to think about festivals, to think about tours when the album, you know... The release is very close, yeah. Yeah, and, and you don't have such a big name, like, I don't know, big bands, uh, very, very big bands, that mm -hmm. you can think about tour organizing a tour right. uh, without knowing if the album is going to be you know is going to sell well or is going to be well received by people and by by promoters and by press right so we will wait this summer and uh, we will see how the album will be you know mm, mm, will be get from you know by fans and by, by right. from by all press. the critics and all your fans that's it and and then we will see we will see what what, what we're going to do that's wonderful so but of course we will do something. Yeah, uh, that's about North America, so I'm hopeful uh, someday hope. you will come to India. Yeah, <laughs> I really hope, I really hope, really hope so. <laughs> Wonderful. Now, is there anything else you would like to announce? Is there some sort of a spoiler Elvin King has to announce? You can go ahead right now. <laughs> Ooh, a spoiler. No, we've, <laughs> we just said, well, I think, yeah, we just said everything. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I really hope, uh, you know, your readers will, will, will give a chance to the Pagan Manifesto and will, you know, even if they don't know Elvin King, just, you know, have a listen and I hope you'll, you'll like it. Wonderful. Now, well, all I can say is my writer over there said you have co-written one of her favorite albums of the year. Oh, cool. Thank you so much. So, well, that's thank great. you so much. That, that's great, David. Uh, it's, it's been an honor to have a chat with you. I thank look you. forward for your upcoming tours and I, I'm hopeful you guys are going to come to India. Well, I'm looking forward for that too, you know. Thank you so much.